Hello everybody, welcome to the Splash Attack podcast, I'm Dicky. I'm David. And today we're going to be talking about all sorts of weird crap. Um, first thing we're going to be talking about is uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is going on in the United States at the moment in uh, Las Vegas. I nearly said New Vegas again, can you believe that? I know, you are a penis. <laughs> I keep saying New Vegas, it's just like, do you know why? It's because I want a copy of it. Yeah, <laughs> it is New Vegas, screw it. Yeah, um... Got a couple of uh, items we're both interested in. I think we're going to start off by talking about the uh, the what the fuck is it called now? Uh, stupid, stupid website. Len- but, uh, Lenovo Horizon Table PC. Oh, okay. This 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 is the coffee table PC thing, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's a bizarre thing. And talking of New Ve- uh, New Vegas, Las Vegas, whatever. Um, <laughs> A lot of the demonstrations have been for um, roulette and card games and stuff. And uh, a lot of them are saying that it's the idea is to make it a sort of um, a board game emulator, almost. Like a proper, proper board game. So even Monopoly and stuff like that, which is an interesting idea. But are you going to spend... Probably a thousand, two thousand pounds for a game of frigging Monopoly. Are they, are they, uh, uh, sorry, are they saying that they're going to like put this stuff in casinos as well? Then is that what they're saying? Um, I can't say that that's something I've read, but it wouldn't be a stupid idea to put it in a casino, as long as. Mm. See, the difference is, a physical roulette machine is a lot harder to be cheated than a a fully electronical one. Hmm. So um, I'm going to say they probably wouldn't. But in the home, it's what they were showing, is people in their house with their kids gambling. Um, But in the... (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Johnny. Let's lose lose that college money. Yeah. Um, It seems that in the... It's it's aimed at houses. It's a a coffee table PC. That's the idea. And... um, from some of the things I've seen, it sort of can sit up like a normal PC and be used like a normal PC, but, you know, a lot closer to you. Hmm. But I'm just, I'm mostly interested in what differences to any sort of more traditional gaming a, a flat surface could make, as opposed to, um, I can't think of fucking a standy uppy one. I can't think of the word. Standy uppy. That's the new technical term for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hashtag standy uppy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I keep thinking about the seated position with regards to it. I mean, if you were playing, for instance, if you were playing like an Android tower defense game, uh, or you were playing, you know, some sort of, I don't know, action game that you can get on Android or something like that, or even if you were playing a PC game on it, like, I don't know, for instance, if you were playing something like The Binding of Isaac, um the seated position you'd be like you'd have to lean over the coffee table it would definitely be a hunched position absolutely which is not exactly comfortable i think um in terms of that it would multiplayer is the only like true gaming purpose i can see for this because you'd have it's something with that position in mind Mm. you would have to be able to lean back and go fucking hell your go. I mean, it's just, I mean that that sounds great, and you know, tabletop games like Monopoly and stuff like that 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 should be quite fun. But I'm now thinking about you know how people use their coffee tables. You know, they put like you know fruit baskets and potpourri and all that kind of shit all over it. And you know, you'll have like coffee mug stains and and stuff like that. I mean, oh, and can you got, imagine? Yeah, and Big. you've got. Fucking half semicircle coffee stain on your screen. You would you would just be fuming, I'm wouldn't you? Die. And the thing is, is that I mean, all right, most people use coasters and stuff. And I tell you what, if I had a two grand tabletop PC coffee table thing, then I'd be like, <laughs> use a coaster or die, you know. But use your fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it on your knee. I don't give a shit if it's boiling hot. Keep that shit on your knee and away from my... I I would suddenly understand all these people that get so berserk when you put down a coffee cup on one of their tables 
Was, oh, that's just been varnished, you twat. Get that fucking thing off. It's like, that's a fucking £2,000 worth of computer, you prick. Yeah. <laughs> you would, though. You'd be so fucking upset. And the thing is, if you've got children, you know, young children, like, you know, when they've just started to walk, you know, and, and stuff like that, they'll just be wanting to climb up. And it's not the kid's fault. The kid doesn't know it's like £2,000 worth of stuff. And you can't just, like, literally keep the kid away from the centre of your living room, can you? So, I mean, there are lots of, like, imita Im Im uh, imitations, implications. And, <clears throat> you know, the kid's got, like, a rattle toy or something like that, and it's bashing it against the middle of the coffee table when you're not looking. Throws and, like... it across the room, <laughs> as kids have a tendency to do. I just... Uh... I don't know. I mean, the practical applications, yes, if you've got, you know young children, um, you know, fairly young children, you know, 10 to 11, you can teach them because they already know right and wrong by then. And, you know, but accidents also happen, you know, what if the bulb is right above the, the coffee table? Yeah. And, you know, you're on a stepladder or a chair and you accidentally fall, smash, there goes your PC, you know, I just, oh, mm. that makes me, that actually makes me feel a little bit sick. <laughs> yeah. See, because I mean, because you know, the value so easily things. happen. Exactly, and you know the value of things, so you kind of you kind of start to think like, "Fuck," you know, and it, I don't know. For me, I think it would just induce too much paranoia. You know, everybody who went near it, I'd just be like, "That's my fucking PC. That's my fucking coffee table." So okay. I just, I Negative just... sides, half discussed so far. What about some positives? What about some cool things? I mean, like. I like the idea of, because um, I've seen some Android uh, phone and tablet games where you can, because they're multi-touch, you have uh, a couple of people playing. Mm. And I like this idea of, um, you could have like a strategy game or um, like an RPG games. or something mm. where each person has like a corner. And I, I like the idea of people really coming around because in sort of the traditional um, multiplayer, living room multiplayer, not, not online obviously, but living room multiplayer, it's all everyone sort of in a line looking at one screen. Mm -hmm. But in this case, people are more likely to be in a circle. Yeah. And I think that changes the dynamic of how it's played. I mean, you can sort of you can touch everyone else. Whereas if you're in the line, you can only elbow the person to your left or your right if you want to distract them while you're playing. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> and so the idea that you have sort of access to everyone um, makes for something quite interesting and fun, certainly if uh, lots of alcohol is involved and everyone's pissed. But then again, we go back to the negative point. Someone's too pissed and they throw up on your coffee table. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's lots of positive applications you can have for it. I mean, you know, you can have sort of like... <clears throat> um, you can use it as an entertainment thing as well. So you don't need to... You know, you, you wouldn't need to have like a hi-fi or anything like that in your front room anymore. Because obviously, you know, with the table, I, I'm sure that you could attach speakers and stuff to the inside of the table so you could have music going on. Um, you know, you can have like visual stuff going on as well. Um, you know, away, I suppose, from the application of gaming. But, you know, I suppose in terms of gaming, you know, like I was saying earlier on, you know, stuff like Monopoly and, 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 and those thought, kinds of tabletop games, Magic the Gathering even. A thought comes to mind of a sort of uh, a more like a Wii U application of it. The Because um, you have that little screen. Well, what if it was a bigger screen? on your coffee table and that connects to your whatever you're playing on a big screen it connects um, much like the uh, the Wii U controller mm. and having that as your big big ass touch screen one person doing the um, what do they call it asymmetrical gaming yeah well, it's basically one person's the dungeon master isn't it really a bigger screen would be an advantage in that situation. Although, then again, if it's on a coffee table, everyone can friggin' see it. So the, yeah. it sort of swings and roundabouts type of thing. There's well, lots of, there are lots of interesting applications to it, I'm sure. But mm. I want to invent one now. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing is, I mean, you know, you you can kind of think about a hell of a lot of stuff that's um, 
that's positive about it. But I think in this case, I think the negatives outweigh the positives. I mean, especially if you've got a young family, you know, um, that that's definitely, you know, but these are the kinds of people that will probably have it. You know, if you're a well-to-do young family, then you would probably have something like this. Um, I'm not saying that uh, people without families wouldn't do it. Um, but, you know, what the fuck is the point in a, in a coffee table if you've got no mates? You know, it's just like, just playing my lonely tower defence games again and again. You know, it just... That I sounds d- about right for you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh. That, that's how you normally play it. That's how you play any game, isn't it? I wish I had some mates. <laughs> I wish I had a brain. <laughs> Wait, you're nothing not wrong team. with tower defense. Fuck you, David. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I get what you, I get what you're saying, but I just think in this case, I think that the negatives outweigh the positives and stuff. So um, it's not something I would think about buying. Um, I don't know though. If I if I did a bit more, I suppose you know, research into it to see the the actual practical applications of the damn thing. So. If, Basically, by by that I mean, if I saw people that have actually bought it and have reviewed it themselves, and I've seen videos of people actually using it in a practical setting, then that might be, you know, a game changer for me in a way. But um, I think for now, I would probably, you know, you know, step away from that, personally. Yeah, um, it's mostly the problem with me is again what we started with the negatives combined with the price. Just make it a risk. Mm. It's a massive risk. Unless they made it basically indestructible or it was cheap enough that if you had to replace it, you wouldn't then have to sell yourself a couple of kidneys. Um, it would. It's just of no interest in sort of a normal home. No one's spending £2,000 or $2,000 or whatever on something that could break so easily by accident mm. and you've got like a however many inch TV in your front room too to watch exactly. whatever you want so um, it's an interesting as a novelty idea. thing maybe you know it's for people with more money than sense <laughs> yeah pretty much for now for now it's for people with more money than sense so I what about think... sorry next... go on I think unless you've got something else to say I was thinking of moving on to the uh, the next interesting subject product. Ooh. What have we got today, David? Well, I think you'll introduce this. I'll just tell you what it is. It's the Project Shield. Oh, the Nvidia Project Shield with the new t- Tetra uh, Tegra quad core thing. Yeah. Now this thing, I've I, I watched the um, the broadcast where they were showing it off, and I must admit. I mean, the the guy doing it, you know, he was great and everything, but it just seemed like a bit pompous. Not the guy itself, but the 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 language that he was using with regards to the product and and stuff like that. Um, I suppose what you would probably say he was a bit douchey about it, but looking at the product itself and its hardware and its practical application, it's a really good piece of equipment. It really is. I mean, I have it, to say, I didn't watch the. Um, I haven't watched the presentation. Everything I know about it, I've read, mm-hmm. and to me, it seems like a reasonably sexy bit of kit. Oh, it is proper, a proper controller. Because the biggest problem with every single handheld I've ever used is that they are not comfortable mm-hmm. for real long-term gaming. You want a proper controller. Yeah. But the only issue I would probably have with that is probably the weight balance, though. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, having played uh, PSP and uh, 3DS and stuff like that before, um, the weight is somewhat balanced in most of those things. I mean, a a PSP is... I mean, I've never played a Vita, so I can't can't comment on a Vita. But um, the guy looked as if he was handling it really well. So, I'm the, the imagining things this thing can do. You know, it's probably not going to be that much of a problem because think about it. You've got your Samsung Galaxy S3 and your iPhone 5, both very powerful bits of kit mm. that have reasonable length batteries. Yeah, and they don't weigh that much. 
Well, this the the controller is going to be powered by the same sort of battery, and the technology for the screen is going to be similar. So I think that probably, probably, it's not going to be too bad. I mean, it's about the size of an Xbox 360 controller. Like when it's it's because it's obviously it's, it's a complete clamshell design and it's all flush. So when you close it, you know it's one complete entity and nothing sticks out if you like. Um, and it's about the size of an M Xbox 360 controller. It's a little bit bigger, I think. Um, and that's great. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the things that this that this piece of equipment can do is just amazing. You can you can wi pretty much Wi-Fi stream PC games onto the screen. Well, that's one thing I wanted to talk about directly. Is, um, but carry on. We'll, well, we'll break it down bit by bit. But you go through the. the I mean, watching him do that. I mean, he was playing Hawking on it, which obviously you know is, is a free-to-play multiplayer mech game. Yeah. And the screen itself is 720p, and because it's you know, such a small screen, to get that at 720p is actually pretty good, you know, and the fact that it can, um, it will be able to, I, I think, I think they were saying it'll be able to stream like 4k, so, and all sorts of stuff with regards to its capability Wi-Fi wise, um, I think they're also like thinking of implementing 4g as well, um, which obviously doesn't really matter to us because we only got 4g in London right now. Yeah. But in terms of other markets in you know other developed countries, then fine. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about in terms of the screen is just the... I don't know. I mean, a 720p handheld screen, it's just... It's not unfathomable, of course, because they've made it. But playing Hawking... You know, and I've I've seen the demo stuff, and I've I've watched the videos for for Hawking on um, on YouTube and stuff, and at 1080p, and even at 720, that game's going to look amazing on that piece of kit. And the thing is, is that <clears throat> it also looks incredibly comfortable. Um, the way the guy was holding it, it was as if it was second nature. Um, and obviously, the screen to be, is touch. It's going to be the ultimate toilet gaming equipment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and especially if you can... Because uh, basically, the way the Wi-Fi works is you use your PC as the rig and it just streams it like a cloud server. So it just sort of... And because it's LAN, you know, it's going to be so, so much faster than it would it's, be if you were using something like OnLive or something like that. It's a wonderful gimmick. <laughs> I I'm what? not sure how... How much I would use it if I had one, and dependent on the cost, how much would I use it? And that's my major concern. I mean, it's cost again, and it's CES, yeah, so it's generally bleeding edge stuff, so it's going to cost a lot when it first comes out. But, oof. I mean, they didn't talk about the price point, but I'm reckoning this thing's probably going to be upwards of 250 quid, you know, oh, at easily. Least. Oh, at very least. Um, I think it's more going to be towards um, 500. You reckon that much? I reckon that much, yeah. I don't. Because but... it's it's the latest NVIDIA um, core, mm. which is an amazing little bit of kit that um, will be discussed another time. Yeah. Um, it's very, very powerful. It's a bleeding-edge bit of kit, and it's unique. There's See, nothing out there that provides quite that experience. A full gamepad with a portable screen hmm. is essentially unique. The stuff that's close to it and stuff that tries to replicate it, there's devices you can get for a um, the PlayStation 3, the DualShock 3. Hmm. There is a clip you can get that clips onto that and then clip onto most smartphones to get a very, very similar experience, but it's not a dedicated piece of hardware, and um, the drivers for the PlayStation 3 pad are iffy at best. Right. You certainly can't play on live with it, not yet anyway. Not properly, certainly not. <clears throat> well, it kind of brings me to one of the main issues I have with, the, uh, with Project Shield. 
the, the screen is a touch screen. Now, this thing is Android run, pretty much. Yeah. Like, the whole thing. So, it's it's great if you want to use, you know, Facebook or something like that on Netflix. But, the thing is, it's a control pad with a screen that's, that's a touch screen. So, 99.99% of all Android games currently are all touch screen based. So, the difficulty lies in holding the damn thing and using the touch screen. Well, and I think you've, that's you've kind of worrying stumbled, for me. You sort of stumbled on another point: is no one's making games for this device. Yeah. Not really. There I mean, are. I, they did hint at the fact that they've had quite a few, you know, developers come forward and say, "Well, we'll make games exclusive for it." Um, well, that's and stuff fair like enough. That. And and yeah, that is fair enough. But I mean. You know, if this thing doesn't take off, it will it will tank like like hell. And yeah. You just. But the thing is, I think there's enough positive applications for this. You know, um, I was watching a podcast the other day, and someone was saying that um, uh, the practical applications are for like people who are at university, because this thing is going to pretty much be able to do whatever you want it to do. So if you want to watch Netflix, you can pretty much stream that from the device itself to your television. And it'll be, it'll pretty much be, you know, your PC. You know, if you're if you're on a, if you're living on a college campus, and you yeah, know, don't necessarily you want, have that if much. You want room. a PC? You want a PC? Android is no substitute. It's it's enough for m most of the time, but when you need a PC, you need a PC running Windows or Linux or Mac OS, depending on your preference. Other I was going to say, don't you dare available. speak for the devil. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, if you're talking from that perspective, my thought would be, if you want a dedicated, a 90% dedicated gaming portable device, the Razer, the Razer device is, uh, I can't remember what it's called exactly. Is it the Blade? Uh, is it that one? Damn it, I cannot remember. It's in there somewhere. Anyway, we were talking about this the other day, but yeah, go on. This is this is a Windows running device. It runs Windows 8, so it, it's running a proper operating system. No offense to Android, I love Android to pieces. It's my favorite thing since sliced bread. Hmm. But it's still a mobile operating device. It's still designed for people on the go. Windows yeah. is designed for a desktop environment. Although Windows 8 is supposed to be a hybrid, it's still a desktop environment. And if you're going to go, I, I would never ever recommend a device like Project Shield or whatever it's going to be called. Because it's too, uh, it's too niche -y. it's too, I don't know. You know, is it going to have the ports to plug a, a keyboard and mouse into it so you can get some proper typing done? Is it going to have... Is it going to have the flexibility of something with a couple of USB ports in it? Or is it just going to be a 90%, 99% dedicated uh, gaming device? It's a difficult question to answer, really, isn't it? Well, we don't know yet. But exactly. I mean, we can speculate, if you like, but, I mean... Speculation, Nishan. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't... I'd... When I look at when I look at the thing, I just think, you know, the the nerd in me, you know, gets tingles because I I think to myself, woo, this is going to be wicked, you know, because you know, there's so much shit you can do with it. But at the end of the day, if if I was going to use it in a practical setting, then I would, then I'd feel great about that. With my current setup, with what I've got, I mean, I've got my PC, I've got my television, I've got my mobile phone. Would I need that piece of kit? No. No. Um, you know, because if I wanted to do toilet gaming and stuff, which, you know, I do regularly because, you know, <laughs> I yeah. just take, I'll just play flow on... Because you are a phone. man and thus need... To ...a cue from Nintendo to use the toilets on a regular occasion. Well, you know what? My dad would read the crossword, uh, read the newspaper, sorry, and do the crossword on the toilet. I am a modern man, and what I do is I play Android games on my phone, or 
you know, read Twitter or something, you know? So, I mean, if I had a family or something like that, you know, if, if I had, like, a busy household and stuff like that, maybe I would think about it. But I, I'm not going to go out and buy, you know, an estimated, you know... So, we'll, so for argument's sake, we'll say 300 or 350 quid, right? Yeah. So, I'm not going to go out and spend that amount of money when I could spend that amount of money on something else that would, you know, like a better graphics card or, you know, a, a, a better setup, a better microphone, a HD, you know, camera. So, you know, I don't think that I will ever be, you know, thinking about purchasing one of these kinds of things. But I, I just think... It's With cool regards thought. to imagination, it's fantastic, you know? If someone gave me one, I certainly wouldn't slap them. Exactly. But I'm not sure how much of a, uh, of a really useful device it is. There are ways and means of getting the same results, like I said with the PS3 example. If they improve um, the available drivers for that to the same level that this controller's got, this becomes completely redundant, and you just buy the next Tigra 4 device that comes out that's, you know, a good deal cheaper because it doesn't have this hulking great controller sticking off of it. That you, I don't know, can you remove it? I, what, what, I've not read it. Is what? it, is that a solid thing? Can you take that screen off of that controller, or is that permanent? No, 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 it's one entity. So you, yeah. you know you can't. So, um, to me, that's that's quite a big negative. Because I'd like to be able to take it off and just use it as a tablet, as a a very small tablet at five, I think five inches, isn't it? Mm. It'd be a very small tablet, but it'd be nice to have that option. And anything, it's flexibility that is generally my biggest want from a device. And while, yes, this thing does look cool, it's pretty powerful, it can do some pretty cool little gimmicky things, but it seems quite inflexible, and, you know, I, I like flexibility in my stuff. And again, price point will probably be too high, and I don't know. Well, we'll I see. think we should keep an eye on this, though. Oh, I definitely. Think I think we should keep an eye on it, and I think we should, you know, discuss it at a later time. But <clears throat> certainly, it is it is a lot, you know, to to sort of look out for. And I think we've been talking about this particular subject for a bit too long. So, what have we got next, man? Well, I was thinking about today talking of toilet gaming, and the other thing that I do on the toilet is thinking. And I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks I was thinking that. about um, this generation. And it is believed that it is currently starting to drag on way too long. Everyone's saying that um, the next consoles are only going to be announced maybe this year, maybe next year, who knows, maybe the year after. Because they're trying to milk them for all they're worth. Uh, well, Microsoft I'm... and Sony want to, uh, want to milk them for all they're worth because they're big businesses. It's what they do. Mm. But, and a lot of people say this hurts the industry it's holding back technology, it's holding back gaming in general because we, we aren't getting the same power that we, sh we should have new power by now. We should have more powerful machines under our tellies. But we're not getting that. We're getting it in PCs, but because mainstream games tend to be released on everything, hmm. it means that the PC version is always miles better but if the console versions were were better than they are now, then the PC version would probably be miles and miles better beyond that. Mm. Uh, you know, those are some negative sides. But I wanted to chat about what are the what could be the good things about an extended life cycle. An extended life cycle. Yeah. I can't really think of many now. I mean, it's been eight years since this generation began. And uh, I think you mentioned earlier that, you know, it's pretty much been sort of like five... Uh, it's generally five years. Generally five That's years between cool. each new generation. And I'm thinking to myself that I think eight years is long enough. Um, I mean, obviously, there's this this, this there, thing... That's not, that's not what this conversation is about, though. Well, no, I, I, I know that, know. but I'm getting to that. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, 
I think we're not we're not going to have this extended thing. We're we're not. Um, I I think this year at E3, Microsoft are going to unveil what they're doing next. Um, there's I can't remember the name of the guy, but on his um, he, he works for Microsoft and on his website he's got a countdown to E3. And <clears throat> all right, yes, that could mean anything. It might not mean the next Xbox. You know, it could mean that they're doing something with smart glass or something like that. I don't know, but. I reckon, you know, we've waited long enough and I reckon the next generation is coming. Now, the benefits from an extended generation would, I think, it would only serve to, to, to help more indie developers, I think. Because I think when the next generation comes along, indie games are going to get, you know, stamped on a little bit. Um because right now they're enjoying I, I, indie games are enjoying a renaissance of sorts aren't they really um, because well everybody knows how the hardware works now well yeah and, and not only that I mean alright most indie games are on PC but a lot of these things like Fez Braid games like that you know they're all on XBLA or they're on PSN and you know you're looking at this stuff and I've, I don't think honestly I've seen so many indie games come out for so many different platforms and, and like I said, mostly PC, but I think they would enjoy a longer renaissance if we had the this generation extended. And that would be good for the gaming industry, I think. Because, I mean, not that I really enjoy all of these, you know, 8-bit Mega Man looking fucking things all the time, because to be honest, that gets on my tits. And it's well, there like... are some, there are some lazy indie games that try to be indie for the sake of being, oh, we're indie because it's eight bit and aren't we clever? Well, no. Mm. Create but... something interesting and unique. People who exactly. started doing the eight bit stuff to as a throwback were that was unique when they started doing that shit. Yeah, it's not unique anymore unless you can bring <clears throat> something to the table. Just making it eight bit doesn't make it interesting. Well, you know, I mean, when you've got games like Super Meat Boy and uh, The Binding of Isaac, again, Fez, you know, Braid, games like this, and, and Journey even, even Journey, you know, um, amazing, amazing games that are, I mean, obviously Journey's a bit of a different thing because Journey is... Um, More of an experience than a game. Yeah, but I, I was talking about graphical fidelity. Uh, Journey's a beautiful looking game. But then so is, you know, so is Braid, so is Fez in their own way. Um, so I think journey aside, um, with regards to, you know, even, even graphical fidelity and, and theming is what, I'm, is what I'm going for here. Theming in indie games um, that are entirely unique. I mean, some of the creativity from these one, two, three man teams. I mean, it's just astonishing. And... I would hate to see that be crushed when the new generation comes along. Um, because, you know, some of the best games I played last year were indie games. FTL, for a start. That's one of the best games I played last year. Um, you introduced me to Super Meat Boy. Um, so, I would hate to see that get stamped on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that... Um, but that's the only benefit I can see from an extended generation, you know? Well, one of the benefits I was thinking about is in terms of your mid-range PC gamers. Now, one of the negative sides I said was the fact that um, holding back the consoles will always hold back the PC versions no one is ever going to write a completely different version of the same game for PC because it's just not it's just not worth it. It's not worth yeah. your time and your money. So um, having this extended generation does bring back the PC market. But then again, it does hold back the PC market. So gamers like us can continue to enjoy the latest games at still higher fidelity, better graphical quality than our um, console counterparts and the highest quality, generally speaking. Hmm. And we don't have to worry about that going away five minutes from now. 
And I think that that's kind of comforting for me. I like that idea. I like that my hardware isn't going to be completely obsolete in the next couple of months. I shouldn't imagine it will be completely obsolete in the next couple of months, though. I mean, oh, no, no. It, it's not going to be in the next couple of months. It isn't going to be in the next couple of months. But when, when the next generation of hardware comes out, it's going to be as... It won't be as top-end as the top-endest PC ever. Hmm. But generally, they, they tend to make... Um, I think on the PS3, they made something like a $200 loss every time they sold a PS3. So it was about five hundred dollars when it came out. Yeah. So that's seven hundred bucks, American. So we're talking what, five hundred quid? Yeah. Something like that. About four, four forty, four fifty. Our PCs didn't cost five hundred quid. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you if you imagine how cheap these components are to get hold of now. Yeah. And, and how cheap they are to produce now. I shouldn't imagine Sony are really making much of a loss now with regards to that. Or, yeah, or they, even Microsoft. No, they're not making that same loss on the PS3s. Of course they're not. They're not making any loss on PS3s. But when they release the PS4 or whatever they want to call it, they will, again, move to that point. They will move to a price point where they lose money. They speculate to accumulate. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, Pretty much every company does that. I mean, Nintendo are doing it right now with the Wii U. They did it with the Wii. They, they, I mean, fuck, they did it with the Super Nintendo. So, you know, this kind of like speculation to, to speculate to accumulate is, is kind of the way it works. I, I, I understand um, they'll that. Make, they'll make well, the money back, though. I mean... That's not my point. It's not my point. My point is that their hardware, and they're, they're usually getting their hardware a lot cheaper because they're mass producing it. So they're getting it at the cheapest price point as well. Yeah. So say that a comparative PC is going to cost six, seven hundred quid. Getting it for five hundred, and the hardware is just going to be that much better than what we're currently using. So we're going to have to upgrade again, and I don't like upgrading because I have to. I like upgrading because I want to. I don't know. There's just part of me that worries about the next generation because it means I'm going to have to spend more money. Well, it's kind of an inevitability. You're going to have to upgrade at some point anyway. I know you don't want to have to do it within the next, say, six months or anything, but at the end of the day, it's an inevitability. We're all going to have to do it. If we want to be playing AAA games, if we all want to be playing, you know, better titles, then we're going to need better equipment to do that. And... I mean, I understand the, the problem financially, but I would rather this generation moved on, sort of thing, um, simply because it will be nice to see some, you know, brand new hardware. It will be nice to see consoles and, you know, and stuff like that being able to run games in 1080p completely, you know, rather than saying it can be in 1080p when it actually fucking isn't. Um, I just think that. And plus, the other things that they'll be able to do will be just as good. So, I'm with you, though. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I don't want to have to upgrade anytime soon, you know, because I know I won't be able to afford to do that very well. But, I mean, I think it's like you said, you know, it, it's like swings and roundabouts. You want it so you get a better quality of, of, of technology and a better quality of game, but you don't because you know how expensive it's going to be to upgrade. And God knows how much, you know, what kind of bells and whistles the new generations of consoles are going to, going to have. You know, what, what all kinds of shit they're going to have with regards to extra stuff. But, I don't know, it, it is worrying for me, but at the end of the day, I think this generation has gone on long enough. Yeah. Although I'm loving, like I said, although I'm loving this uh, renaissance we're having with the indie games. Um, I'm also, you know, pr I'm thinking realistically here. You know, if if we don't want the games industry to stagnate, we're going to have to start moving on pretty soon. And it might not have to be this year. You know, it could be next year. But I think people are already getting that. I mean, last year, 
we were so hoping that E3 was going to be an announcement of the next generation, and it wasn't. So people were getting really antsy now, like you know, you know, what the fuck, Sony? You know, what the fuck, Microsoft? Let's let's go. You know, let's let's have something new. Um, I don't actually count the Wii U as a next generation console. No, the the Wii U is a catch up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, it's like a go between. And I think Nintendo are going to do well, but I don't think they'll do as well. I, in well, fact, I, I, I hope they do well because their their store is um is quite it's quite interesting. It's quite good. They're um they're really encouraging indie development on that platform. So your your sort of fears about um, a possible killing of indie development could be sort of shifted over, maybe. Maybe the Wii U will be the saviour of that because they're giving them decent, um, decent returns, much better than on 360 or um, PS3. They're they're just really trying to encourage um, indie development, which is always a good thing. Hmm. Hopefully, they won't make an epic mistake like they did with uh, Super Meat Boy. They almost had Super Meat Boy, one of the best games of its respective year but they couldn't possibly let them have a little bit more space on uh, the Wii marketplace because it was too big and it mostly because of the music mm. the game itself is actually technically quite small yeah but because the music and but if you remove the music from Super Meat Boy it becomes less Part of part of that. I can't imagine playing. I can't imagine playing that without the music. No, it it would uh, it would be a travesty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 all part of that experience. Yeah. I mean, the music's you know essentially background stuff, really, most of it, but it it adds to the atmosphere so much in that game. I think a big um, part of it with that particular game is that it um it has a rhythm. And yeah. so does the game. The game has that rhythm, and you need to get, you need to slip into a rhythm. And without the music, that becomes quite a lot harder. Mm. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to lose this. As much as I want the new, the next generation to uh, to to come forward, I don't want to lose that. I don't want the next Super Meat Boy to be drowned out because of the new generation. I don't think we're really going to have a choice in that matter, though. I think once the new hardware comes out, everybody's going to be talking about it, and nobody will really give a shit. But I think that will calm down, and you know, the next generation, if you like, of indie developers. Um, it also depends on what sort of emphasis Sony and Microsoft put on indie development. I mean, I think who Sony knows? Will maybe they're going to put your your indie titles in top billing right next to your triple A's hmm. because that's what they want to do they want to push that and say hey there's there's your EA latest whatever but here's one from uh, a couple of guys in Devon and it's quite good uh, so we thought we thought you might have a look at that as well well the thing is is that they make, they do make an incredible amount of money on these really good indie titles as well. I'm not sh I'm not quite sure about Microsoft. Microsoft have to change their fucking attitude when it comes to patching. And they also have to change their attitude when it comes to Xbox Live. Um this yeah. this is I I mean I know we talked about this a while ago, but I want to bring it up here because I think it's uh, I think it's significant in that I'm probably going to go Sony next time. Um simply because Sony have uh, you know, for all their faults with regards to certain things and servers and, and whatnot, Sony have got their, their ear to the ground with this stuff and I think that um, Microsoft will suffer if they don't change their game plan with regards to Xbox Live and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm not going to go into that too far, but I think it's significant in that Sony have released, you know, some of these indie titles and, the, and they've realised that there's a there's a good key demographic of people that you know, you know they like AAA titles, but some of them are far too long, and they just, you know, they don't get enough time anymore, and they just want to play a game that's fun and happy or whatever. You know, games like Super Meat Boy, that they don't have to invest so much of their time in. You know, so they can complete the game in, you know, for instance, like for three or four hours, and you know they're satisfied with that. And most indie games now they have they have some kind of replay value. 
Um, I know that's true of some AAA titles, and I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not spamming them to the side, but um, I think that, you know, people like Sony and Steam uh, on the PC have really sort of cottoned on to the idea that, you know, you can sell this game for 10 bucks, and, you know, people will pay that amount of money for an indie game, as long as it's good. They'll, they'll pay that amount, and and there's a really good market for it. And I don't think for a second that Sony are going to ignore that coming into the next generation. So I think, from a positive perspective, I think that... Um, yeah, so, you know, with regards to... Uh, uh, with regards to Sony and, and stuff like that, it's, it's... I think Sony are going to have the better advantage here. But that is if Microsoft don't change their game plan. Um, if you're looking at paying, you know, ten thousand dollars, you know, indie developers can't afford that if they want to patch their game more than once. You know, and then there's the whole certification process. But the thing is, is that I mean, obviously they've got to go through certification to to go through Sony as well. But at least Sony aren't charging them to do all this kind of stuff. You know, um, look at the amount of money even big developers like Bethesda. Look at how many times they had to patch Skyrim on the Xbox 360. We won't we won't go into um, what happened on the PlayStation 3 with uh, with Skyrim? Because no. you know it's pretty much broken on the PS3, isn't it? So you, you know there's nothing you can do about that. But you know if you imagine paying ten thousand dollars per patch, well, that's been... a lot of money for an indie developer to cough up to fix their game. I think there's been something like eight or nine patches, so that's that's nearly a hundred thousand dollars, a tenth of a million dollars. That's insane. Yeah. That's a game. And it doesn't it does not cost that much to Microsoft. If Steam can do it for free. And if Sony can do it for free, why yeah, can't Microsoft? Because they're a little bit greedy. And there's a lot it's it's also a lot to do with paying for the privilege too. Especially with regards to Xbox Live. Having had an Xbox three sixty as long as I have and you know not being able to just turn my xbox on and, and play you know a game online i just think i just think it's wrong that i have to have a gold subscription to do that and, you know in my current financial state i can't afford to do that i understand that there are plenty of people that don't care about paying 5.99 a month but do you know what with playstation plus you pay 5 or 4.99 a month or however much it is and you get free games every month and you don't even have to do that if you don't want to yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to turn this into an argument about you know, you know, live stuff. I mean, we're we're we're, we're so off topic now. I know. But um, coming back to the topic, um, I think that um, my only worry with the next generation coming very quickly is you know the no, it won't be the death of indie games. I think they're here to stay. Oh yeah. Um, but I think that you know them being drowned out for a while might lower their, you know, I suppose, market value, I suppose you'd say. It depends on how they're handled by the next generation of consoles. It could be that they'll take a cue from... They'll take a cue from Nintendo with the really supporting the indie market, and it'll be fine. It'll be bigger than ever, and there'll be more indie gamers out... More indie games out there. More people will be more interested in it instead of every bugger buying the next Modern Warfare game, and I know that's an easy target to pick on, but still it's the biggest selling thing in existence at the moment. Hmm. Apart from like air and toilet paper. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the biggest selling things out there. So yeah, it's an easy target because it's a target. Anyway, my point being, if a, if a few more people who say they're into games but all they play is modern warfare see these get these things sort of thrown at them and they go oh that actually sounds quite interesting and it brings them into the real sort of I don't want to say real gaming you know you're still a real gamer if you game all the time but there's more to it than just that hmm. and if, if people who are really into games can be brought into the fold and, and see new stuff it's a, only a benefit to everyone. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right there. Um, and I, I think the way to look at it in general 
with gaming in general is, is to have a more positive outlook on you know what's going to happen perhaps in the next couple of years i'm 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 semi convinced that we're going to see the new generation especially from microsoft we're going to see the new generation i think the wii u's been a catalyst if anything else and i think that microsoft i don't think microsoft and sony are quaking in their boots but i think they're a bit more anxious than they were before i think that they think the money making trains probably going to come to a halt i mean you're not seeing the game industry stagnate yet but I think if we left it any longer, I think that will be the case. So I think they're kind of moving things forward and, and pushing stuff along. Um, so yeah, I think that we should um, we should we should look on look on this positively. Yeah. yeah. So is there anything else you want to talk about, David? Um, not really. We had the you had your troll topic, but that's not really a gaming topic. No, no. Um, I wanted I wanted to talk about um, trolls in general, but um, I think we can I think we can leave that for another time. We've I think we've done our best to pad out an hour, and I think we've done quite well. Yeah, I think so too. My main worry was that we would stop at about twenty minutes in and go shit. We've run out of stuff to talk about. Well, that's the thing. Um, and this you and was I our can... first you and I... to podcasts. <laughs> it's only going to get slightly better from here. Yeah, I think we'll have better production values and stuff. I mean, I need to get a HD camera so we can, you know, sort of do Skype and stuff like that. So we can um, have video and stuff like that. Make it a bit more interactive as well with people. Um, yeah. So, um, but I think this was good for our first, for our first foray into the podcast system. Yeah. Um, and I've had a lot of fun. Um, so bye guys and uh, we shall see you next time see ya bye